Life in the city of Mardan is not the same for the Shah family. Following the disappearance of Israr Shah four months ago, the policeman and father of five children was taken away by other policemen in both uniform and plain clothes. Israr's brother went to the city police station for help, but no one was willing to do anything. As soon as I heard the news over the phone, I rushed to the city police station. When I told them that my brother was picked up by the police, they simply refused to accept it and told us they knew nothing. He showed us his brother's various commendations and can't understand why he was taken away. Israr's young sons glanced through memories of better times when their dad was home and want to know what crime he's guilty of. They should tell us what crime he has committed. There must be a reason. At least they should tell us why and if he has done something wrong, we should be told. Zuhayb has already left high school and says he wants to be a doctor. Until his father returns, he works at a chemist earning less than $60 a month to help his family. We will hit the city police station to find out what progress has been made after the family finally managed to lodge a report. Although the police seemed cooperative, they couldn't give us an answer. For people such as Rifaq Shah, his only ray of hope was to approach human rights organizations. In Rawalpindi, Amna Masood runs Defense of Human Rights Pakistan, dealing with more than 2,300 similar cases. Her husband went missing 11 years ago, and she's a vocal opponent of forced disappearances. She campaigns to find out missing people. It is written in the Constitution of Pakistan. So how can they justify being uh, uh, doing in such practices which are illegal, which are inhuman? And they can say that we are doing it for security purpose. In a country where hundreds of people have been rounded up, no one knows what happened to the missing people. Kamal Haider Al Jazeera, Islamabad.